calling from a 630 area code. Who's this? Where are you calling from? Oh, hi. Is this me? Yes. Oh, oh wow. Okay. I've been calling. Yeah, let me take myself off speaker. Okay. Hi, guys. Um, I've been listening for weeks now. I actually discovered you guys during like, the Republican debate. Um, oh. And then I've been, I've been listening for weeks. Um, but I am. You like watching people parent. drink uh, too much and talk too much <laughs> over debates, apparently. Uh, I, I just needed help getting through Republican debates. Let's just put it that way. Gotcha. Uh, I'm sorry. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Oh, my name is Sarah. I'm, I'm calling from the suburbs of Chicago. Okay. Um, I am a Syrian American uh, Muslim woman. Um, and I've just been uh, first, uh, you know, thank you a lot for covering what's going on in Palestine right now. Um, I'm actually someone who I used to listen to Phil DeFranco on YouTube every single day. Um, I just find his coverage interesting. And I just stopped because he hasn't covered anything about Palestine really? in months ever since October 7th. Yeah. He was an OG it's, YouTuber. It's I remember I remember when I was coming up, I watched him a little bit, too. Yeah, and yeah. it's just, it's disgusting because I feel like people like him, you know, they they have this this whole perfect victim narrative. And now that um, Hamas has attacked and some Israelis have died, suddenly he, you know, uh, Palestinians don't matter. Um, but I'm calling today because I actually finished my sociology degree. I have a master's in sociology and my paper was on Arab American identity. Um, and a portion of it, because I was interested in racial identity, and a portion of it was really about how the switch from Arab Americans assimilating as white into our society into um, kind of what we have today. Um, and before I get into that, I just wanted to share that I don't know if you guys are aware of a resolution that Durbin and a few other senators uh, introduced back in January that they wanted to designate <laughs> January as Muslim American Heritage Month. No, I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah. So, and I just want to share this because one of the co-sponsors is actually John Fetterman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I just found it interesting. And that's been something I've been calling them about, like just the utter hypocrisy of trying to say you care about Muslim Americans when uh, you're doing everything like this in Israel. Right. Um, but so basically, I just I wanted to kind of emphasize, as I've been trying to emphasize with my reps during my calls, that um, the situation in Palestine is incredibly connected with uh, the way that Arab Americans are treated here in the States. Um, Arab American scholars have consistently pointed at 1967, um, the 1967 Arab-Israeli war that really pushed for that systematic mass media framing of Arabs as barbaric, uncivilized, and inherently violent people. Um, and so the thing is, is like all the research shows that pre-1967, Arab Americans were honestly like just about to fully become assimilated as white people. Um, we were a lot of times treated as white ethnics, especially since most Arabs were Christian, the ones who first um, immigrated. And um, this 1967 uh, Arab-Israeli war, though, really took a shift because, um, for one, a lot of the Arabs coming in now were Muslim. But more importantly, Zionists actually here in the States, assuming that Arabs were going to um, basically support Palestinians, just started insane uh, propaganda against um against Arabs here in the States. And uh, let me find the quick quote here that um, uh, her name is Elaine Hagopian. She is a Syrian American sociologist, I believe, and she's done a lot of work on this. And she talks about how Zionists assumed that anyone of Arab origin would be anti-Zionist and so pushed propaganda to portray Arabs as congenitally anti-Semitic, evil, and intent upon destroying the Jewish people. And what's wild here is this is the sort of rhetoric that ended up actually, and, and we see this right a lot with like Arabs and Muslims, it doesn't just affect society, but it affects government policy. So um, I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys are aware of the Nixon administration directives in 1972 and the code name Operation Boulder. Have you guys heard of it? Mm, no, tell me. 
So Operation Boulder, and again, I'm just going to quote from Hagopian here. She says that it, it was a carte blanche authorization to investigate individuals of Arab-speaking origin, whether citizens or not, allegedly to determine their possible and or potential relationship with terrorist activities related to the Arab-Israeli conflict. In spite of the fact that the only reported and verified acts of terrorism in the U.S. related to the conflict were found to be committed by the Jewish Defense League members, which, uh, just for anyone listening, is an extreme Zionist Terrorist organization, right. obviously. Yeah. yeah, no, you know, don't, let's not get anti Semitic about this. Um, so, uh, and, and what's really messed up, and it's something that's well known within the Arab community, that, so like even pre 9 11, these like leaders and students, like people see, you know, SJPs popping up on campuses, um, the U.S. authorities, during this time were intimidating activists who were trying to, to speak out against the conflict. And um, it's just this really, really messed up situation that um, Hagopian kind of was, was looking at a lot of different issues between minorities and how minority status changes. And she talks about how she kind of related this to, um, she called it international conflicts resulting in minority status change. And she uh, compared it a little bit with what happened with Japanese Americans. And the reason why she compared it with that is because she talks about how a really significant complication of this minority problem is that segments of the American population actually may support the discrimination because of the pronouncement of national security. Right. So I think it's just like a reminder for people Like this is not something that was like just put on Muslims post 9-11. This is something that has heavily affected Arabs starting from 1967. Um, and it goes from like throughout the way that society treats Arabs all the way into the way that the government pushes this. Um, yeah, I just I wanted people to be aware of that because that's been something I, I talk a lot where I tell my reps, like, if you care about even American citizens here, you should be caring about the way that we carry out this war. Yeah, I mean, that's fascinating stuff. I, I um, uh, and it's important to recognize like the racism as like a sort of historical pro, um project um but you said about 1967 because a lot of people might think it started in 1948 but it reminds me of a conversation between uh, professor avi Schleim and uh gada karmi um avi Schleim, uh idf serving historian former israeli and gada karmi um fled the nakba but at around 28 minutes into that um which is on double down news youtube um uh gada karmi talks about how that was the shift too like she felt like a part of western society until 1967 happened and then there was a like thing there was a complete night and day after that interesting yeah yeah um and through this last two points one um and it affects all forms of society class sadly doesn't i mean it, it helps obviously but i know my my grandpa he's a doctor immigrated here in the early 70s and he told me that that um basically people like flipped the switch on him like like there was a case of he works at a hospital he's a physician and someone in the hospital was like, oh, there's some sort of bomb threat. And one of the nurses, like, looked at him. And he's like, what the heck are you talking about? You know me. Like, why, why would you think that this is um, this is something I would do? Um, but the last thing I wanted to add was for everybody to, to when they call in their reps, to ask for the evacuation of members of the al Aga family. Their last name is spelled E-L-A-G-H-A. Um, they have family members who live here in the States, but they have two cousins named Burak and Hashim who have been stuck in Gaza with some other immediate family members and last week uh, they were actually sadly um, actually kidnapped by Israeli soldiers so they've been really trying to raise awareness on this to try and get um, senators, the state, the State Department, anyone to get their cousins out, um, and I think they might actually be about to or are suing the Biden administration oh. for uh, for not helping their family. Chicago Sun right. Times has coverage of that. <clears throat> we'll put a link to that piece. Yeah, uh, in the, in okay. the Chicago well, Times. Uh, so thank you guys so much for listening. Thanks for the call, thank sir. You. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks. Bye. Hey.